the Christian warrior ethic. I felt pressure all my life to retreat from evil. Uh, the idea seems to be that somehow Christians owe it to others to forgive, and therefore any sort of judgment, any action taken to protect the innocent, or to stand for justice, is really some form of anti-Christian oppression or judgmentalism. Uh, slowly but surely I've come to believe that this is a dangerous lie. Uh, turn the other cheek. One of the, the more profoundly pacifistic passages in the Bible is in Matthew 5, 38 to 48, and I'll just read it. Uh, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn thou not away. Ye have heard it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor, and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you, and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. You know what this passage never once says? Stand by and let evil be done to the innocent. It never says that. The verse is about a Christian giving ground when and only when the evil comes upon them personally. It is about taking evil upon yourself and overcoming it with generosity and righteous deeds. This is echoed again in Romans 12, 14 to 21. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Uh, be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as it be with you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, is it you heap coals of fire on his head? It's not exactly complimentary. The point here is not that you promote evil or give ground to evil or let evil get away with it. You overcome evil by compensating for the evil with an extra effort on your own part. Again, this is not about letting somebody beat the crap out of somebody else and lecturing the victim how they need to forgive. This is about you going over to the victim and helping him. Or this is about you going over to somebody who's threatening someone and saying, Look, if you want some money, I'll give it to you and leave the guy alone. I'll make up the difference. I'll do it. I'll do the extra work to prevent the evil thing from happening, not to just let the evil thing go. And note again the lack of any commandment to allow people to abuse the innocent. This is... This is nothing else but the concept of chivalry, as it would manifest itself in Western Christendom centuries later. The chivalrous knight ought to be poor, contrite, willing to be insulted and denigrated personally, but ever at the ready to stand against injustice and the persecution of others. I'm not saying that that is what medieval knights always actually did. I am simply pointing out that that is the legend of them. And that is a concept that arose over the years in the popular Christianized Western mind, that a good knight ought to behave this way. 
And this became the attitude that we wanted to see in our government. The government ought to be full of humble men willing to take on the righteous cause, even of men of low estate, and ever ready to defend us from evil. So that's the first issue that I think we're facing. We need to stop pretending to ourselves that Christians owe it to folks to give ground to evil just as a general principle. The Bible does not teach that. It teaches that a Christian ought to give ground to evil personally if, by doing so, he might be able to negotiate peace with a personal adversary. Not to give ground to evil and by peace at the cost of injustice for all. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching Christian Labor. Please like, subscribe, comment, click on an ad, or donate from the banner of our YouTube homepage. Thank you very much.